All right, movie news episode two. I, I, you know, I didn't expect to be recording this video so soon after the last one, but I am because there's a lot of movie news, a lot of trailers. Well, not a lot of trailers, but a good amount of them. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I'm excited to talk about stuff. So this week, in terms of like what's coming out this week, there really isn't a lot. I mean, the only thing I know that's like major, if you're really wanting something to go see in theaters this weekend, Godzilla minus one is the black and white cuts coming to the theaters. Fortunately, the theater I work at had terrible show times. We only had one at like 9.30, but you can look around at different theaters in your area and see what the options are. And unfortunately, they did not give us the IMAX option for the black and white cut, which fucking sucks. I'm still going to go watch it. I'll have a review up at some point for that. Uh, really excited about that. Um, also, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, so... There's a couple other random things, but I can't even remember the titles of them. And, like, I don't think my audience reaches enough that they'd even attempt to go see some of this stuff. There's not a, there's not a lot this weekend. Next weekend is Argyle, so we'll see how that turns out. But, uh, yeah, the box office this weekend uh, was okay. It was a slower weekend uh, for the box office. Uh, but I was surprised Mean Girls actually continued to pull in money. Uh, it did about $12 million. I did not actually expect it to do that well because, I mean, that's not that far of a drop-off from last week where it made like $30 million. So, you know, drop the normal amount a box office movie should, to be honest. And and even on a slower weekend. So Mean Girls continues to pull money. I didn't love Mean Girls. I liked it enough. Um, there's a couple songs I liked in the movie, but it was okay. But I'm glad, I am glad that with like Barbie and this movie, there, there's now a like a, a, a thing happening with uh, movies where uh, you're seeing more female, uh, more female, not necessarily female led, but more fe female focused type movies where like, where, you know, that's the demographic that they're clearly going for. And women are showing up. They're dressing up. They're wearing pink. I saw lots of that for Mean Girls. saw lots of that for Barbie. So we'll see how that goes. I think Hollywood is definitely going to, you know, have women uh, be a primary demographic for movies. Which is great because they've never really had that before. And I think it could lead to some interesting movies. Because Mean Girls, while it wasn't, a, was, while it wasn't great... I just thought it was okay. It was an interesting movie. Barbie was an incredibly interesting movie, uh, unlike anything I've ever seen before. And, you know, like it or hate it, that's just a true statement. So that movie is great uh, for, you know, that alone. But, yeah. Uh, now, the other thing I want to say, uh, Invincible Part 2 comes out on March 14th. <laughs> Guys, this is fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Um, you know, at first I was like, oh, they're, they're, they're making the show, you know, and that's why the delay was happening. And then, but apparently if you understand all these episodes are done. And so now we're not getting them to March 14th. Uh, why? I honestly, this is what they should have done. It should have been invincible season two coming back at the end of this month. Uh, and then it has been hotel should have pre premiered next month. And then Mr. And Mrs. Smith should have premiered in, um, March, I think that would have, well, actually, yeah, I think that all, those release dates all would have worked out better, because now people are just mad, and at first they were mad when it seemed like we're only going to wait two months and seem ridiculous and childish, but now it just seems like, nah, you have a reason to be mad, like, fuck you, Amazon, for making us wait this long. I, I know people, I know some people who will say it's not that big of a deal, but I feel like it is, because... They are diluting hype and excitement for this show when they do this. And it does feel like a weird fucking punishment for the audience who wants to just see the conclusion to this fucking story. So, great episode. Uh, uh, in season two. And I hear there's great things coming, so we'll see. But I, I'm definitely, definitely going to be talking about when it comes out. But still, just really fucking stupid that they're making us wait so long. Next thing, um, 
I wanted to say uh, was apparently they're working on a new Jurassic World movie from, I believe, the original scriptwriter of the first Jurassic Park, from what I read or something like that. Um, this kind of was expected to me. I think that any franchise now that they tell you is fucking done and over with is like, no, they're not. They're going to do more, and that's fine. It's really just fine. I mean, this is, you know, and we'll see how it goes. I don't think it'll be good just because, like, Jurassic Park is one of those franchises where they keep making sequels, but, like, there hasn't been a good sequel, I guess. Like, Lost World, I like, and it's an okay movie, but I can understand, but it's really, like, that's about it. They they haven't reached the above the level of okay when it comes to, like, a Jurassic Park sequel. Everything else has been shit after that, right? And so why do we keep returning to this? Oh, money. Yeah, I get it. But, like... It's kind of like, okay, well... Yeah, you did this. And now we're just going to keep making them. Um, and I really... I don't know. After the last one, I wonder if people will even show up for another Jurassic World movie. Because the last one made a billion dollars, but everybody hated it. And so, like, I feel like you have to do something really interesting to get people to show back up. Though I, I doubt Bryce, Bryce Dallas Howard's coming back or Chris Pratt or any of that. I think this is probably going to be, like, I feel like this could be, like, a horror movie or something. Like, it might be something actually unique uh, in the Jurassic Park franchise because I think they're going to want to reinvent something. Um I, I think Universal just want, wants more Jurassic Park stuff because it makes more money, right? I think their best bet, though, would to actually take the Camp Cretaceous show and remake and do some not remake, do something similar to that show in live action and make an animated movie. Oh, not live action. Sorry, my bad. Uh, animated movie in theaters with like a theatrical release and a budget. And that'd be great. Um, I think people would definitely show up to that. I really... I'm not a huge fan of that show, but I see it as popular on Netflix and would actually probably do great for them, but we'll see. Uh, last thing I want to add to the list... Uh, well, there's a couple more stories I want to get into, but uh, what's the next thing I want to... Man, I'm going blank tonight. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Uh, other thing I wanted to say was... Um, Oh, Mufasa. They gave us the plot for it, which is... This this plot for this movie just sounds cliche, which is that, like... Mufasa gets separated at birth from his parents and then ends up meeting another lion cub, which is his name... Which is obviously is Scar, we know that. And they become, like, adopted brothers, and then there's, like, some fighting and shit. I think this is so stupid. Like, it just sounds cliche. When I immediately, when you go, like, there's a flood and and his parents get swept away, I'm like, I think of Good Dinosaur. I think of Lion King. It's just like, come on. It just sounds so cliche and bad. I, I don't know why this is happening. I don't even know if this movie will do well, right? Because the first Lion King remake made a billion dollars. But I don't think anyone actually likes that movie. It's kind of, it's like Jurassic World Dominion. I feel like it's a movie everybody saw when it came out but ever since then everyone who's ever talked to me about it is like it's been was like it's not good I'm like yeah of course it's fucking not so I think I, mean, I think I remember in my reviews for Jurassic World Dominion saying it was okay and I don't think I would say that now but yeah and the last thing let's talk about the Oscars um I don't have too much to say about the Oscars other than a few snubs that I thought was kind of odd. Like, all the movies that I expected to get the awards that they, they got got it, right? I, You know, we got, like, um, we got, what was it? Um, right, we got Best Picture, Who Kills the Flower Moon, Holdovers, you know, all that. They got all the acting categories you thought. Oppenheimer did, too. Barbie got some stuff. I actually... I was actually surprised American Ferrera got an Oscar nom for her performance in that movie, which does not surprise me because she gave that whole monologue of what it means to be a woman. And that was a beautiful part of that movie that is very special. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great part of that movie. So, 
very memorable part, so I'm glad she got that. Um, I don't think she will win for it, but she was very good in that movie, so. Um, the, but the other, the kind of the snubs I thought were like, so in the animated category, they nominated um, Elemental, which I get why they didn't, because they're not going to nominate Wish, and so they had to nominate an animated movie that wasn't Wish, and that was by Disney, and so Elemental's the obvious one. And Elemental's not like a bad movie, but I would have put Mutant Mayhem over there, I think. But of course, I understand why they didn't, because I mean they already got Spider Verse in there. They can't have too nerdy of movies, and they probably didn't watch Mutant Mayhem. So, and also Mutant Mayhem didn't have the buzz in theaters that I think it deserved to have, and so maybe that might have contributed to that. But uh, that kind of sucks. I really wanted that movie to get the love it deserved, but it kind of didn't. Also, I found it weird that in the original score composition, they uh, they put the um, Dial Destiny over um, like Spider Verse for score or something. I get why they didn't, because it's a nerdier comic book thing. But like, fuck. But like, come on, why is like Indiana Jones there? I'm tired of them nominating John Williams, because like. When the Fablemans came out, even that was a great score. But even at that point, I was like, "Why are we still nominating him? Dude's ninety years old, does great musical compositions, but he does not deserve to win all the fucking time for shit because he's ninety years old and like y you guys clearly love him, but his best scores are behind him. You know, when's the last really great John Williams score other than the Fablemans? But even that was like, I don't think that was award worthy." So, he's done some great scores, but I really think it's time for John Williams to retire soon. And I'm going to be really sad when he does. I love his music. I mean, I love the Dial Destiny score, but it still did not deserve to be nominated. That's fucking weird. Um, I also thought it was weird that Wonka didn't get costume designs. Like, no, it, it totally should have been that, that category. Also... It should have gotten Best Original Song nominations. Like, I don't fucking get that. And I guess they did do the I'm Just Ken song, which is good. Because I saw, like, a list of stuff that was being pushed to be nominated for the Oscars. And it looked like there was two songs from the Barbie movie that were not in the list. It's just like... Come on now. This is a great, um, this is a great, yeah, but this is, I think, I agree, I forget who said this, this year is kind of a boring Oscar year because you, all the movies that you expect to win the awards are going to win the awards, and there's not really much to it. I agree with that, but I also think it's an interesting year because I look at this list and there's so many movies that people actually watch this year. Like, I feel like the holdovers that there's probably some general audience people that did watch that movie. Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, uh, you know, you got uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer and all that stuff. These movies actually were movies that were successful and people watched. So I think that's going to do good for the Oscars this year because we got movies that everyday people watched and enjoyed. And that means that we might actually get some people to actually tune into the Oscars this year which they clearly need so I think that will be cool um and I, you know I think that might be a thing we might see more is that m more movies that people actually watch showing up the Oscars it's not it's not that I want to be that guy well nobody watched these fucking movies it's like but it does really feel like the last few years there has been a great divide between what the average film goer is watching and what the average uh, award nominee is, you know, and that doesn't mean those movies don't deserve the awards. Like, I kind of hate those people who go, No, I'll watch these movies. I'm like, Yeah, but these movies are great fucking movies, and you should watch them, and they deserve awards. So, like, I don't know why you're talking, but at the same time, I do think that there needs to be a good blending of both, and I think you know, we might get more of that because. I think people are starting to tune out of the blockbuster a little bit. It's going to take a little bit more time to get there, but I feel like we are starting to see less and less of the turns on blockbuster movies. Some of these smaller movies are starting to peak up speed, you know, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Napoleon, things like that are interesting experiments. Even, you know, smaller movies like um, Mean Girls are like not 
the box office giants that some people thought they would be, you know. Well, no, I mean, opposite of that. You know, some of those movies are taking off and being more box office giants than they would be, so we'll see. But yeah, that's kind of everything I got for this week. If there are any other stories that break during the middle of this week, I'll probably just do a video. Uh, uh, do the video next week and add that onto the stuff. Uh, let me know your thoughts, like, share, and subscribe.